What's the word, y'all? One, realistic trade a free agent target for every NBA team over at Bleacher Pro by Andy Bailey. Be sure to leave a like. Use the comment section. Who is somebody you want to see your team go after? Because free agency is in a couple days. It's so weird that we go from NBA Finals to NBA Draft to NBA Free Agency all within a two-week span. I love it. It's like high gasoline, high octane. Um, and I'm here for it. But now we got an article. And I like we have articles like this because I don't want to make a video for every single trade rumor, every single free agency rumor, because uh, in reality, 95% of them aren't going to come to, to a real thing. Even if the teams are having conversations, it takes a lot for a trade to go through. So DeJounte Murray and Atlanta Hawks, will it happen? Possibly. But it's likely that it won't you know what i'm saying i hope it does because i'll be interested in that team but you get what i'm saying so i don't want to make a video about every single rumor other than the carry irving rumor right carry irving rumor could have been league shattering in a way so that's why we make that video but all the other ones we kind of chilling once free agency start it's going to be a lot you know what i'm saying a lot to talk about teams are going to be making different stuff happen so let's get into this article realistic trade of free agent target i'm done listening to the wages of the world on like potential trades it's gonna happen Woj told us this is about to be a ton of trades on draft night, and we got two. I mean, well, we got more than two. We got two NBA players. We got Kemba Walker going to his team, being bought out. We got Anthony Melton going to the, the 76. But other than that, it wasn't nothing. So when we talk about trade targets, ah, I don't know if it's going to be the thing. But this free agency class is not amazing. It's not a ton of teams that have great cap space anyway. So trades are the way to make your team better. But it seemed like a lot of teams are going to be looking relatively the same going into next year. I need to see one team, like, blow it up. It seemed like every single offseason or regular season, too, if you're looking at the trade deadline, one team blows it up, and now they look dramatically different, and all of their pieces are scattered across the league like the Orlando Magic and the, and the Vucevic trade. Vucevic, Evan Fournier, Aaron Gordon all got traded within, like, 24 hours. I need something like that this offseason, a team that is out there trying to sell. But you don't really see a ton of selling um, in the offseason because offseason means that a new season's coming up, and we don't know what could happen. It's usually at the deadline when we are underperforming. Rudy Gobert looking cool with the with the blonde hair, my boy. Um, happy birthday to Rudy Gobert. It was a couple nights ago, a couple days ago. The Atlanta Hawks. I'm expecting Rudy Gobert to be on the list for the Hawks, the Bulls, uh, the Raptors. Um, I would say Charlotte, but they don't have the assets to pull off the trade. Rudy Gobert should be a hot commodity. And because he is, Danny Ainge is out there. Um, you know, Danny Ainge don't like to be finessed. So <laughs> he don't want to be the one finessing. And that's what makes me a little bit scared that Rudy Gobert is going to be a Utah Jazz this season because Danny Ainge is not a guy that's going to pull a trigger on some stuff. He wants to get adequate value, which makes sense, but it's also bad for us as NBA fans. Um, I think the idea of Rudy Gobert in Atlanta fit any team that needs de defense and needs a center. Rudy Gobert fits perfectly, if you ask me. It's about trying to convince the rest of the people out there is like, do we want to be paying Rudy Gobert forty seven million dollars once he's thirty three years old? A lot of teams are probably going to say no to that. But if we're trying to buy in and the now, we don't give a damn about what his contract looked like four years from now because we're trying to, to maximize our value in this moment. And I think if Rudy Gobert is traded, that's the idea. We don't, we're not thinking about his contract at the end of it because if we trade for Rudy right now, we're automatically one of the best defensive teams in the league. We automatically have a chance depending on what the rest of your pieces are. So that's what I think is going the way these teams are, are convincing themselves Rudy Gobert is the dude. I want my Bulls to do the trade. I'll say it and we're going to get to it because because I'm assuming that he's the only guy that I could even imagine is on this list for the Chicago Bulls. For the Atlanta Hawks, I like it. But I also like the idea of DeJounte Murray and, and Trey Young. Just because I want to see how fun it would be. Kelly Olenek for the Boston Celtics. I mean, I guess so. This is him going into his trade accept the trade exception of $17.2 million. It's a big trade exception. And what are you making this season? $12 million? All right. Um, he was a fan favorite, especially after that game seven versus, was it game six or game seven versus the Washington Wizards, one or the other, where he turned into Michael Jordan. Um, and I, or I'm, I'm sorry, he played for the Celtics. Why would I mention Michael Jordan? He turned into Larry Bird for a game. And it worked out pretty uh, solidly for them, and they won that series. So bringing them back would be cool, but it don't really elevate their ceiling. I guess he takes the minutes of Daniel Tice, which wasn't a ton of minutes anyway. Derek Fayers to the Brooklyn Nets. I don't really know what to expect from the Brooklyn Nets offseason, just because you got Kyrie Irving surprisingly opting into his contract. I read on The Athletic that Brooklyn Nets didn't even know he was opting in until they read the tweet from Shams. So it's unpredictable. Is Derek Fayers even good anymore? I don't know. I legitimately don't have a single memory of Derek Fayers on... The Thunder, other than he had one game against the Bulls that he was okay. I didn't watch enough of Derek Favors on the Thunder. When I was watching the Thunder, I was not paying attention to Derek Favors, bro, I'm being honest. And then we got to the second half of the season, and then I wasn't watching the Thunder at all, candidly speaking. So is he still good? Is he solid? I don't really know. But maybe he pulls an Al Horford. Nobody's watching for a year, then Al Horford went back to Boston and was the man. Maybe Derek Favors got that too. 
Mitchell Robinson for the Charlotte Hornets make way more sense than I said. Rudy Gobert early because he is a lot cheaper, especially if it's just for the middle of exception. I don't know what the Knicks are doing as far as like what players that are free agents do they believe to bring back because they're opening up the money to bring Jalen Brunson in. They got to trade away Cam Reddish. They got to let Taj Gibson walk and maybe they got to let Mitchell Robinson walk as well. And if you're the Charlotte Hornets, this is kind of a steal because Mitchell Robinson plays good defense. He He's He's a good shot blocker. I think he's still putting together the rest of his defense, but I think it's going to come around. He's got to stay out of foul trouble, and he's getting better at that every single season. Um, but if it's just a middle of exception to bring in Mitchell Robinson, if I'm Charlotte, I would do that. I mean, he can't be worse than anything else you had at center. There we go, Rudy Gobert. Um, I've heard multiple things about Rudy Gobert in the Chicago Bulls. Yesterday in the presser, um, AK over there said, uh, we want continuity. We're going to continue our continuity, which makes me think that when you're talking continuity continuity within the core, I'm assuming that he's talking about Vucevic as part of that continuity. Now, I could be misreading that. But in order for this deal to happen, I do believe that Patrick Williams would have to be thrown into the trade because why would Danny Ainge slash the Utah Jazz do a trade that's like Vucevic in a first for Rudy Gobert? Like, that's, that's not enough. They would have to sweeten the pot a little bit. And Patrick Williams would have to be that guy, honestly. And I'm still trying to come to terms with it. If it happened, I think I'd be a little bit sad because I think P. Will has a, a bright future. The timeline is a little bit weird, man. The timeline is a little bit weird. And he's working out with DeMar DeRozan currently in California. So imagine he checks his phone, his aides, and talk about you going to Utah. Do you stop your workout with DeMar? Because he's the enemy now? Probably not. Anyway. Gary Payton is second for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm expecting a lot of teams to call Gary Payton and his agent this um this offseason. I mean, he does uh, so many things well. He's one of the best perimeter defenders in all of basketball. He plays a role so great as you saw and you saw that in the playoffs, other than you know his elbow being broken. Um he runs the floor great, plays great defense. He was shooting the three-pointer better than any time in his career. I'm expecting a lot of teams to call. And if it's as cheap as the middle of exception, and that's what uh, Andy Bailey is saying, I'm expecting 20 teams to call. If it's that cheap, you know what I'm saying? Because he is that good of a player. Otto Porter, you can never have too many wings if you're the Dallas Mavericks, for sure. Um, especially because you traded. Oh, no, let me stop. Sterling Brown wasn't really on nothing. Uh, you can never have too many wings. And if you're bringing back Jalen Brunson and you don't have to worry about that position no more, I think the next uh, thing of action is adding another wing. You can never have too many of those. He's almost a 40% three-point shooter for his entire career. I would like this a ton. Um, but I think Otto Porter is going to have some more teams call it because guess what? Otto Porter was the starting forward on a championship team. He started in, what, three NBA Finals games? Add that to his resume. NBA champion. Shout out to OP. Denver. Ooh, go back to where it started. All right. Um, where, well, where it started was the Chicago Bulls, but we traded you and Yusuf Nurkic away for Doug McDermott. Um, yeah, why not go back? Go make up. They gave him a ton of money. And you look at that contract now and be like, oh, that was a bad pay. But before Gary Harris was injured, he was projecting to be one of the better two-way players in all of basketball. The defense was elite, and his offense was still coming around. Then he, he had those injuries, and now that $18 million he's guaranteed this season don't look as good. And he was a part of a, a trade that helped the team out. I mean, he <laughs> this would be some crazy inside trader stuff if they told Gary, hey, we're going to send you Orlando for a season and a half. We'll bring you back, bro. Just go to Orlando, hoop a little bit. But we know you love Denver, and now we got you and the person we traded you for, and boom, you back in the team. And we back in Um, I don't know if this is the direction they should go, but he, he does still play defense at the bare minimum. I remember when Kyrie was giving him 60. He took his um his objective in the second half was try to clamp up. Was he successful? Well, Kyrie has 60, so that answers the question. Detroit Pistons. Now, I, I know... Yeah, so this is what I read, too, from James Edwards, The Athletic. And the Pistons are expected to use um, the majority of their remaining cap space on multiple veteran pieces rather than just one. I knew that I heard that as well. You also got like Miles Bridges' people saying, hey, if the Charlotte Hornets don't give us that bag, we want to go to Detroit. But I don't know if Detroit would be super interested in DeAndre Aiden anymore after getting Jalen Duran. I don't know if they'd be interested in Miles Bridges because of how expensive they're going to be. Um, and either way, if they get one of these two dudes... League pass them. League pass them. One of the best league pass teams. They're going to they be competing for a playoff spot if they get DeAndre Aiden. 1,000%. Um, Warriors. Kyle Anderson. I never really know what direction a team should go off a championship. Bring him back. And then, I mean, if it's the tax payer mid-level, Kyle Anderson's a really good player. I think he's an underrated player. He didn't have an amazing season this year compared to the year before. But I think that he's still really good. I don't know, Warriors fans. You let me know. Does he fit? Is he the next Iggy? A slow pace? A uh, slow. Oh, is he the next Sean Livingston is what they said. Oh, snap, a slow-paced, ball-handling, tall guy. That jump shot looks a bit weird. He might be the next Sean Livingston. Now, he don't shoot that mid-range like Sean. Sean was a mid-range killer. He shoots more threes. It takes him 12 seconds to get it off, but he shoots more threes. Anthony Simons for the Rockets. 
Oh, that was something I did not expect. Um, I don't think it's super realistic, though, because um, the reports are saying that he's going back to the Portland Trailblazers, him and Yusuf Nurkic. So it's not super realistic. It said if John Wall is bought out, this is written like two days ago. And John Wall has been um, uh, bought out. Anthony Simons, Jalen Green. I don't, I don't know. Jalen Green, Jabari Smith Jr., Alperin Sengun, and who is it? Jay Sean Tate in there. Maybe Kevin Porter Jr. is now at his natural position of like a guard wing and not the point guard. That's another league pass team right there, bro. I think Anthony Simons has so much more in the tank. Oh, I think the next level for Anthony Simons, if he stays in Portland, is figuring out how to be effective off the ball. The one of my ma- I should make a whole video about this. One of my major criticisms about these younger players, and I sound like an old head when I say this, is that so many of them come into the league as ball dominant players. That when they play with another player that is also ball dominant, you kind of wondering what the hell they're doing. I know Steph Curry is a one on one made in the lab, but like, why are we not looking at Steph? Everybody want to shoot like Steph Curry, but nobody wants to move like Steph Curry. That's half the battle. Well, okay, not half, but that's a big part of the battle that made Steph Curry one of the greatest of all time. It don't matter where he is on the court; he is the threat, and he has never stopped moving. Like Trey, the Trey Youngs who was compared to Steph Curry, and all of these younger dudes that shoot from super deep range, none of them has ever incorporated the, the moving off the ball and becoming the threat. That's what makes Steph Curry Steph Curry. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes him a Hall of Famer, a first ballot Hall of Famer, a two time MVP, a four time NBA champion. I would love to see, because especially if you playing with Dame, listen, Dame is going to dominate the ball. He's Damian Lillard. So let me add some value by slipping screens and moving back and forth, because we know you can shoot. Oh, yeah, we know you can shoot. But we need more than that. That's my next thing. Okay, I don't need to make a whole video. That was my video. Miles Bridges for the Indiana Pacers. Oh, I would love it. Oh, him and Tyrese Halliburton. And then, I don't know, uh, who they draft? Benedict Matherin they drafted. I don't know anything about him, but I know the name. But how the heck would they do this? I'm tying up your option on the offer sheet to restrict the free agent. Simply matches risky. I just want to see what the heck they do with Malcolm Brogdon and Miles Turner, if anything. That's all I care about. Ricky Rubio, Ricky Rubio with the Clippers. You don't have to worry about this because they signed John Wall. Next, carry on with the Lakers. I was going to say you don't need to worry about this, but I guess there's still a report that it's a possibility. Uh, I don't know. He took his option, so it's, it's less likely today than it was yesterday. Let's just say that. Bruce Brown. Oh, Bruce Brown's really good for the um, Brooklyn Nets when they were starting to give him minutes. I remember making a video on this channel. I'm like, Brooklyn, Steve Nass, please play him. And then two games later, he was being played, and he had an amazing game, and he has stuck into the rotation after that. It's going to be other teams out there that's going to call for sure, but they're saying with the Memphis Grizzlies, he's the guy that's going to replace the Anthony Melton minutes. Um, I did not realize they had three draft or got three people in the draft, Kennedy Chandler, Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Like, why not? If you saw one of the major things with the Miami Heat this season, especially when we got to the playoffs, is they didn't have people that can help create in the in the uh, in the half court. Donovan Mitchell does that. Unfortunately, you gotta uh, you gotta pay for it, right? It's gonna cost a lot to get Donovan Mitchell. You gotta even convince the Utah Jazz that they want to trade Donovan Mitchell because I don't think they are. That's not even though we as fans keep talking about the splitting up of Donovan and Rudy Gobert, we haven't heard anything from them. He has, I haven't seen one rumor that said they're even asking people about it or that it's a possibility. So you have to pry him away because it's not like he walked into the office and said, I want to be traded, at least from our knowledge. Now, it is Utah, and they keep everything close to the lip. Nobody's out there speaking. Um, but Donovan Mitchell with the Miami Heat would make me a big believer in the Miami Heat. Otto Porter, hot commodity out here. Milwaukee Bucks, yep. You can never have too many wings that defend and shoot threes. Victor Oladipo. I read something this morning that Victor Oladipo is trying to get a one-year deal to maximize his value and that the Sacramento Kings could be that team. People are signing to Sacramento. Shout out to Sac Town. If you can get Victor Oladipo, he showed a lot of flashes. He had the one playoff game where he was untouchable, um, but he also had that one playoff game where he couldn't touch the rim. Um, so, you know, I understand him wanting to take a one-year flyer to try to get his value back up. Minnesota might be that place, but I think if you want to do that legitimately, the Sacramento Kings is probably the place. If you want a one-year contract to build some value, because other than De'Aaron Fox, there's nobody within the organization that's going to take the ball out of your hands. You can go out there and protect. Hey, if Victor Depot signs to the Sacramento Kings and, and they somehow are in playoff conversation, give his ass the max. Actually, give him the max to stay there. No other team should be calling the phones. Pelic is Malik Monk, huh? Um, hmm. That would be interesting. Just somebody that could shoot, replacing the, the DeJounte, nope, Devontae Graham minutes. I guess so. I mean, if you're going to have Zion, you know you need people around him that can shoot. Malik Monk could definitely do that. New York Knicks, we got Kyrie Irving. Um, not happening. He opted in. So it's uh, Jalen Brunson. 
We already talked about that a hundred times between us and every podcast you've ever listened to. Isaiah Hardenstein, one of the players that if the Bulls are going out there to try to get a backup center, Isaiah Hardenstein will be number one on my list. Isaiah Hardenstein is a stud at 24 years old. Only problem is he's pro- he might be a career backup, but that's okay. He's one of the better backup centers in all of basketball. Last season, he tied 18th and NBA box plus minus. Stuffed the box scores with 17 points, 10 rebounds, about five assists, two blocks, and a single half first, 75 possessions. And for good measure, he posted a 66.4 true shooting percentage. I'm convinced. Don't get him to OKC. Come to Chicago. Come to Chicago, please. Anthony Simons for the Orlando Magic. Okay. They got so many bodies over there. I would be okay if they said no one. Just just develop the people that you already have. Drummond goes back. Eee! Hey, if Drummond goes back, another guy on the Bulls list that I was like, I wouldn't be mad if we somehow got him for the tax mid level. Um, Drummond, when, he's, when he embraces the backup position, not bad. I really like Drummond as the backup. But as soon as he starts to turn into a guard again or try to turn himself into a guard, that's when we get uh, too far into the deep end. But as long as he recognizes that I'm a backup center and I'm just going to maximize my 20 to 25 minutes, he's he's pretty nice. Bro. I'm not even going to lie. Yakup, this is a sign and trade with DeAndre Aiden. But there's so many rumors about the Sacramento Kings. I don't know if they're trying to buy. They're trying to sell. They're trying to stay put. There's so much going on. I mean, if they want to get DeAndre Aiden, obviously Yakup Pirtle, um, and maybe Keldon or maybe, I don't know, probably not Devin Vassell. Devin Vassell's too nice. It's not going to be a one-for-one Jakob for um, for DeAndre Aiden. It's going to be something else thrown into that. Either way, Jakob is another player that um, if he is on the move, whatever team gets him is going to be super excited about him um, once he's actually on the court. He might be somebody that a lot of people don't know because he plays for the Spurs, and the Spurs, you know what I'm saying, they're a small market team that's been playoff contenders but not like a playoff team over the last couple seasons. So, like, the casual NBA fan don't know that Jakob Hurdle is actually really, really good. Um, either way, I, I like it. TJ Warren. I mean, if you're bringing back or you traded for Jeremy, you bring him back Nurkic, you bring him back Simons. If you could get somebody like him on the mid level, you don't know what to expect, bro. He ain't played basketball in a, a year and a half, two years almost. So I would take that. I would take that gamble for that uh, price point. Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin's really good. Don't get me wrong. He's good. He's good. But everybody else got like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I can't say everybody. Isaiah Hardenstein is here. I was going to say everybody else got like super starter quality players and the Kings get Caleb Martin. I'm changing to, Vic- to Victor Oladipo. I love the idea of Victor Oladipo now. Even though the backcourt of him and De'Aaron Fox probably not hitting a lot of shots, I like it. It's a lot of mid-ranges. A lot of mid-ranges. Spurs, DeAndre Aiden, okay, we already know that. Um, Rudy Gobert, I said he's going to be there for the Raps, but they just drafted the guy, Coloco, is that his name? He, Him and, him and Pascal Siakam are from the same um, city? Country? Something like that. They got a connection through that. But Rudy Gobert, again, if you need center play, Rudy Gobert is the dude. Kyle Kuzma through trade. What does that look like? Um, And the Washington Wizards being mentioned as a possible landing spot for Mike Conley. Kuzma for Conley would be one of the bigger nothing trades in recent history. But I would, you know, Kuzma can hoop. Kuzma can hoop. And lastly, oh, they just f- flopped these two. All right, let me know in the comment section what do you want to see your team do this offseason. You just got 48 hours to think it through because once that time comes, just don't be stupid, y'all. I'm, tell- I'm talking to other general managers. Don't be the Chicago Bulls of last year that the second free agency opened up announced the Lonzo Ball thing. Don't get caught tampering. We know it's happening. Just don't get caught. Wait 10 minutes. Wait 10 minutes. Why are you thirsty?